to my channel today. We are playing this night. Um, last time we discovered a secret about Elizabeth, and no one seems like Miki right now. And we are meeting Shige at this place, and she's making us go get something for her somewhere far away. Alright, let's get started. She abruptly tilts her cap and storms out of the cafe, leaving me in dumb silence. I return to my apartment feeling an unusual kinship with on-call military personnel. At this moment, everything is peaceful and quiet to the point of boredom. But the more I wait, the antsier I get, like a ball of energy tingles up inside me. I'd almost like to just go and get it over with, but District 6 is huge. There is no way I could find it without at least some general guidelines. I'd be going to the sketchiest area of the city with no backup, no support, no health insurance. No health insurance. Can't do nothing without health insurance. Heck, this is probably illegal for Shigure to do. Probably. Uh, whatever. It'll be interesting and helpful, apparently. Since I have some free time right now, maybe I should. Yes! We're going to watch this. Well, this is... I assume I have to talk to people at some point, right? This... There are... Endings with people, I would assume. Hmm... Let's watch Gopher Mecker. Gopher Mecker would be a nice break from today's insanity. How's Gopher Mecker break from insanity? It is insanity in a bit wrong. Anyway, I turn off the lights and settle back on my couch, fixing my eyes on the laptop screen. <laughs> How did I do this? <laughs> okay. So, this. This background has been blurred due to copyright issues. They didn't even cut the ends off of the cardboard box. Oh. President Jay Graves is sifting through paperwork on a cardboard desk. Behind him is a blurry backdrop of... Is that the White House? Even Game is pointing this out. This background has been blurred due to copyright issues. If I split, I can read the caption at the bottom right corner, saying this background has been blurred due to copyright issues. He sifts through paperwork for a good five minutes, maybe more. It's not exciting, to say the least. Crash. I'm just about to close the video out of warning when there's a huge crash and his door explodes with a fairly fake explosion, carrying in a group of five women, no men. Each of them bears an open blazer and some eye-burning neon colors and the chassis for skinny strings hiked up their hips. And their hair, long and silky to their shoulders, or aqua curls and a crown over their head, or messy waves that fall over their eyes and so you wonder how they can see straight. President Grace calmly sets aside his stack of paperwork, holds his hand together, and evaluates the unusual group. Can I help you, sir? So five strangers suddenly strike dramatic poses, hands on hips, pointing to nowhere, big karate stances, even rhyming with teapot. One of them sets forward, shaking his head like he's in a shampoo commercial. 
words spew from his lips in rhythmic rap. Is this, uh, supposed to be like a K-pop group? I feel like it is. We have a group called KOXE. If you want to live, then you better flee. KOXE? Not KOXE. KOXE. I'm the leader. Goch Minam. Bless you. No, that's my name. Goch Minam, the leader of KOXE. Suddenly, the other members leap in front of him, crouching to the ground in another dramatic pose. Best band the world has got. Hit us with your bestest shot. Bestest. Dazzling dancers. Plastic enhancers. And top notch dancers. <laughs> it was right. You're a K pop boy band? Yes. We are a K-pop fan, and we demand to tour Akramea to increase our loyal slaves, I mean fanbase. Certainly not. Akramaeans are free peoples. I will not allow them to be bound to you. Remember some of the jump and synchronization, pounding into the ground in some neo-interpretive dance moves. When they stand again, they're singing in a jazzy five-part harmony. I'm not singing that. You baby know you did it. Nothing should stand in our way. You baby gotta get with it. You're in a world of pain. Cousin Graves falls to his knees, clutching his ears in agony. The singing is hypnotic. Silver, Mucker, mobilized. The backdrop, which has been wavering precariously for a solid five minutes, tips over as the president's robot bursts onto the scene, revealing a very ordinary looking backyard. I'm not sure whether to be exasperated or impressed at the fact that none of the actors seem dazed. Oh, 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 you poor, poor fool. It'll take more than that. Simple tool. Go, fangirls, I choose you. Pokemon? To be fair, I have seen as a person who has followed some K pop, I have uh, seen how hyped up fangirls can get. He swings out his arms, and a huge crowd of preteen girls swarms from off screen, screaming and waving picket signs and surrounding the poor model robot. The robot now that I get a closer look, it seems like it was built from tin cans crafted beneath their weight. No! What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Really? The president staggers to his feet, his mouth set in a grimace. Give me liberty or give me death. He reaches, into his, and he reaches into his oversized suit and whips out some awkward contraption that looks like the bastard child of an electric guitar and a shotgun. Uh -huh. He slams down on the string, shaking his hair back and forth, which... Sorry, the uh, music is was unexpected and slightly annoying. He slams down on the string, shaking his hair back and forth, which would have been more impressive if it wasn't cropped so close to his skull. The song sounds oddly like America's National Anthem, if the anthem was hard metal, that is. Uh, oh, say so can you see my mother truck and electric guitar? The members of KOSC 
quickly clamped their hands against their ears and raised their voices until they're screaming in five from harmony. Your eyes, you know, your eyes, nose, look at me. Your eyes, nose, look, that's from a real song. Your touch that once could touch us. It's hopeless now. We start throwing little containers of... Is that eyeliner? At the president, he calls them with the sweep of his baton. What so proudly we hail as the co X is first screaming. Sorry, sorry, stop it, stop it. That's another song. We'll be proven, proven, proven. Wrong, wronger, wrongest, baby. Okay, I wasn't turn the thingy. No, no I won't. Because if there's another one, I'm just... President Graves jerks the end of his guitar and a spray of poorly green screen bullets flies towards chaos -E. I suppose they're not BTS, so they're probably not bullet for boys. In one fluid motion, Goj Minam reaches into his pocket and taps a small container of hair gel and wraps his hand around his veins until his hair turns into a spike. The swing, so, so he's a unicorn? The swing of his head, the bullets bounce harmlessly off his hair lamp. Open new hairstyle. President Graves staggers to his knees as the KLFC members jump in place. No. No. Is this the power of a viral video? <laughs> I don't regret this. <laughs> With trembling fingers, he taps the electric guitar. Suddenly, he goes in his trusty blonde wig and pink dress materializes out of nowhere. Oh no. Haters gonna hate, 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 hate. I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. He starts spasming like a lunatic, and mean pulses of energy that fling KOFC into the sky. It looks so realistic that I find myself wondering if that's actually happening during filming. No, KOFC is blasting off again. As they disappear, with a convenient twinkle clearly added in post production, Good job, Tyler Man. Thanks to you, Akameo will sleep in peace. As the ending credits roll, a voice in the background proclaims that any resemblance to persons living or dead is coincidental. Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Out of curiosity, I'm going to go back and see who we could have texted. Alright, so if we could... Who should I text? I don't want to text any of these people. I am... If I'm going to go after a person... Romantically, then can't be one of the guys, because... I kind of like Misato. He's, he's amusing, to say the least. But it would probably be Akira. And none of these people are Akira. So, okay. Eh, let's continue. I lounge against the sofa and stare into the ceiling, flipping my phone idly in my hands. I should study, or cook, or clean, or do something productive. It's what I always say, and then I play visual novels. It all sounds so painful. I'll just sit here for a moment. Sit here and do nothing. I suck. Yeah. Out of curiosity. What is his backdrop supposed to be? It's kind of cool looking, but I have no idea what it is. Ah, the Divine Master. Can I scroll off? Scroll off. Can I not scroll off? I guess not. This is the address. I've appended directions that a toddler could follow. She hasn't met me. I'm terrible at directions. I probably couldn't follow them. Rest in the knowledge that if you miraculously manage to lose your way, you will possess an intellect of inferior to a toddler. 
That's fair. Or perhaps that is already the case. Should I just go now? It's not like I have anything better to do. And setting up early might give me some crucial information or something, who knows. I throw in a jacket before I stride out the door, the cold night air cutting into my face. This is pretty nice. It's super freaking creepy. I would not want to be here personally. And I think that's what it's supposed to look like. And I like all the little details. There's lots and lots of little details, which I really appreciate. I like all the stars. And it doesn't look like it's just some block star pattern that you just use over and over. They, they seem pretty good. And the, all the little wires. This one, this one. They're going around in the little patterns in the, on the ground on the sidewalk or whatever you want to call it. Lots of good details with creepy. This part of Isamu is a much less friendly one, especially at this hour of night. When you don't look, shadows that shift lights and gleam smiles that shine somewhere in darkness. When you do, only stillness as if nothing odd is happening. Shady lights, dubious advertisements, a smattering of very unfriendly folk on the every corner of the street, I probably should have just stayed home. Then I could have studied. Oh well, waste more time, I guess. Anything is preferable to being murdered in the district with the highest crime rate. Thanks a lot, sugar. I consider it my contribution to the furtherance of society. Gee, you're really comforting. If you're in the quest of comfort, I suggest you procure a plush creature of some kind, child. We have those. We have a chicken, a mini us, and another thing. I'm not sure whether I should be proud or disturbed by the fact that I can perfectly emulate it. What a... Creepy shadow. Moving around. I catch the light syncopatic of tiny footsteps and despite every instinct railing against me, follow them around the corner in a horror movie that's how you die. No one is in this area of Isami and I no one except the Yakuza, a crazy murderer, or maybe a different criminal. The question is why am I really tailing someone who could kill me as easily as they could break a toothpick? I really need to reevaluate my life priorities. Yama says, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. I widely staggered to my feet, ready to meet my attacker with, wait, a child. With child music. Okay. To say the least, the girl before me is definitely not a threat. Don't say that. She could easily be a threat. She's almost two heads shorter than me. Small, skinny, with large, blinked eyes fixed on my own. Her pale skin, pointed chin, and unbending posture reminds me of a fragile doll. Furthermore, she's an academy student. What would someone like her be doing at this time of night? What are you doing at this time of night, Lava? Sorry. I can see the hint here. No. Her voice is light, wispy, like the word was pulled out of her mouth rather than spoken out of her own volition. Of uh, what? She only silently stares into the distance. Okay. The more I examine her, the more mysterious this girl becomes. She appears dainty, thin frame, lacy hair accessories, full cheeks with big doe eyes and tiny feet. Her voice but her voice is monotone. Her words are few, her gaze is dead, and she walks fearlessly around the part of his family where no girl should go alone. Maybe she's from the hood. Lost. No. 
Even her reactions are unusual. Florence had no idea what could possibly be going on in her head. This isn't... This isn't really a safe area. Hey, you're here. Hey, Worth. The most she's spoken so far. I'm not as... Weak, frail, she might consider that insulting. I would. Hey, as you. You crashed into me. Hey, uh, Raven. What? You crashed into me. She states this flatly, as if it's the absolute truth, and no other alternative is acceptable. Right. It dawns on me that her complete lack of fear in this district of the city should be suspicious. She's tiny. Shouldn't she be terrified? Are you coming back to school? No. Well, I was going to offer to escort her, but... Then, where are you going? Are you going anywhere? It's like speaking to a brick wall. Do you need any help? She completely ignores my hand as she glides to her feet, ivy brushing off her skirt. She, she completely ignores my hand as she glides to her feet, ivy brushing her skirt. Really, what is going on? Oh, she doesn't know. She glances around, not secretively, not even worthy, almost mechanically. Then without a word, she walks away, disappearing back around the corner. That was strange, although I'm not sure the word strange can even qualify just how utterly strange that encounter was. Bizarre. Freaky. I don't know. I don't have any thesaurus in front of me. Regardless, she... Regardless, she's gone, and I've got my own business to see, too. Despite this calm line of thought, I'm still shaken as I head to the location Shigeri has denoted on the map. Somewhere I must have taken a wrong turn. I tried to follow her directions through the letter, but there's nothing in sight. I shuffle closer to the shadows, peering out of my corner of safety into the road. Several shady figures are gathered around the trash bin, laughing raucously around smoldering, around smoldering cigarettes. Maybe I'm supposed to spy on them. No, I'm supposed to retrieve that file. Still now, I can see why Sugar is sitting. Despite her competency at verbal abuse, she's small in stature and can easily be overpowered by any of these thugs. Moreover, she doesn't seem nice and secure gun. So of course she decides to send a defenseless high school student in her stead. I creep around the side of the building, double checking my phone. Yep, right here. Give or take a couple feet. I scan my surroundings, but there's so much litter that I can't see anything particularly significant. Maybe I should ask Chigure. No, this is my assignment. I need to do this on my own. I absently run my hands over the brick wall behind me as if it'll keep me grounded. My fingers brush over something smooth? Wait a minute. I turn to examine the offering spot and hold a piece of paper shoved between the cracks of the wall. Judging me how fresh this looks, it must have been paper just recently. Hesitantly, I extract it and skim over the word. Seriously? Congratulations, Ijiyama. You're not a toddler. My subordinate sent me these instructions to reach the file. Ping Pong Ball falls down a very narrow pipe. Nice fits to the ground. All you have is your Ping Pong paddle, shoelaces, and a water bottle. How do you treat it? He claims that the file is at the answer within half a block of your vicinity. A puzzle, seriously? Yeah, puzzle man, let's do this. I played a fail hunt, tons of puzzles in that. Let's try to solve this puzzle. 
Well, I guess there's no getting around it. I just saw this to find the file. Which object is the key to this puzzle? The paddle, the shoelaces, the water bottle. Um, the water bottle. What part of the water bottle should I use? Lid, body, contents. The contents. Alright. I could just use the water in the water bottle, which means I could just freeze the water, fill the bottle in the pipe to it's forced to push the ball out. Pour the water down the pipe. Drink the water and urinate into the- that's just extra. Cause it's still liquid. Into the pipe to get the ping pong ball out. So it's this. It's just more work. And grosser. And less efficient. It doesn't take longer. I would assume. And if you did this one, you might as well just use your ping pong paddle. Bash the thing. I could simply pour the water down the pipe. The ball would float to the surface. And I could easily pick it out. Seems like that's the answer. In that case, it looks like the answer is water. I take another look at Shigure's note. The file is at the answer within half a block of the vicinity. Does that mean that I have to look for a source of water? What does that even mean? Water is everywhere. There are any faucets, leaves, store. No, wait. There's an old fountain on the other side of the building. I walked a short way down the road. Sure enough, another obtrusive note stuck at the rim of the instant. I walked short. I walk a short way down the road. Sure enough, another obtrusive note is stuck to the rim of the inactive fountain. Figures. Another note. I'm beginning to wonder if I'll ever find the file at all. Congratulations, Ishiyama. You are not a kindergartner. This is the next set of instructions. A petri dish holds the colony of bacteria every minute. Each bacterium divides into two. A scientist begins a colony with a single bacterium at 12 p.m. At 12.43, the dish is half full. At what time will the dish be full? Hour of the answer is the direction in which you must proceed to reach the five. Math. She's enjoying this, I swear. Well, either way, looks like I have to solve this puzzle too. Thanks a lot, she did. This is for HH in in time format. Okay. Two. Oh, accident. Well, I don't know what I was. So. Because it's half full, it multiplies. Oh, well, it divides into two. So since it's half full, it would just take him one minute to be full. So it would be 12.44. Oh, do I just erase this? Alright. 12. I like how the game is describing the thing I just described. Right. If every bacterium divides into two per minute, then it doesn't matter what time the colony is started, all the matters is at 12.43, the dish was half full. Therefore, at 12.44, the dish would be completely full. So that was a completely useless puzzle that basically just told me to go forward. I walked down the road, keeping my eyes out for another slip of paper. And as expected, there's another note jammed conspicuously between the crevices of the two buildings. My question is, why did she go ahead and go through all this trouble? In order to get these notes in the first place, she'd have to come here, which utterly defeats the purpose of sending me. Well, whatever. Looks like there's another puzzle to solve. 
Congratulations, this gentlemen. You are now the fifth grader. This is the third penultimate set of instructions. Now, can you throw a ball as hard as you can, not bounce it off of anything, and still have it return to you? The answer is in the third. The answer is the direction in which you must proceed to reach the file. We only came this far, let's keep going. There's no getting around there, I just have to solve another puzzle. What do I need to change in order to have the ball come back to me without bouncing it off of anything? Ball substance, atmosphere, direction. Direction. Because it has to come back to you. So, even if the atmosphere is different, it would just kind of slowly move the ball if you can. Like if there's no gravity or something. The substance doesn't really matter at all. So, direction. Great. I can't bounce it off of anything and I can't change the circumstances, which means I have to change the direction. The question is, what direction? Up. Oh. I mean, okay. Which direction? Back, forward, up, down. Throw it back, so it'll smack something to get to you. Throw it forward, it'll still have to smack something to get to you. you Throw it down, it'll still have to smack something to get to you. So up is the only answer. Because it wouldn't bounce off of anything. You just throw it straight up. You throw it at me, or you miss it, and it's going to bounce off of your face. Alright, oh, gravity's still in effect. I just have to throw the ball upward in order to have it return to me. So the answer is up. And note says I have to go in that direction to reach the file. I locate a rookie two story building next to the canal. Because that's where I'm supposed to go. I trudge up the stairs in relative in darkness. My only comfort is the light that comes from my phone. Eventually I come to a creepy storage room that's filled with all sorts of ominous shapes. I jerk backward as a dark shape bolts across the floor. But it's just a rat scurrying by. Sugar is doing this on purpose, isn't she? I don't think she can control the rat, but sure. I swivel around the obstacles, keeping my eyes peeled for another tiny corner of light. Suddenly, a silhouette waves in front of my face. A spider. Of all things, spiders. I like spiders. Cute. What if it poisons me? Since its rabid teeth into my jugular vein, stabs its awful spindly limbs straight through my heart? Grows to the size of. Okay, now I'm just being stupid, right? Yes, Gamma. Then it teasingly waves its odious, twisted little leg nearly catching me on the nose. I instinctively stagger backwards, foiling my hands before my face. My back slings into a hard, stony shape. I whip around, examining it fearfully. It's just a statuette of a horse. I was with a note. Finally. Hands still shaking, I seize the note and pursue its contents. The sooner I can get out of here, the better. Congratulations, Nishiyama. You're not a middle schooler. This is a final set of instructions. A rich man tells his two sons to race their horses to a distant city to see who will inherit his fortune. The one whose horse is lower wins. After wandering aimlessly for days, the brothers ask the wise man for guidance upon receiving the advice. They jump on the horses and race to the city as fast as they can. What do the wise men say to them? The answer will show you where the file is located. The final set of instructions, I'm almost done. I actually feel somewhat disappointed. Despite my complaining in the spiders, I've actually enjoyed these challenges. At any rate, I guess I'd better solve this puzzle and find this file. What could the wise men have said? 
enter two word answer. So the wise man said something to them that made them get on the horses and race faster. <clears throat> Even though the one who's slower wins. So what I think has happened is they switched horses. Because they don't specify which horse they jumped on. And that would explain them trying to go faster. Because in that case, whoever's a winner would be the actual winner because they're on the brother's horse. Two word answer for that. Switch. I don't know if it's pressure type switch horses or switched horses. Different horses? We'll just go with this and see what happens. Alright, it's okay. Right, if they switch horses, then they would have to race in order to win. Oh, I got achievement. I got rid of this. So the answer is to change horses. There must be another horse around here. Okay. I'll stop here for now. I'll leave you in suspense about the other horse in the bio and whatnot. Alright. This has been Tato Cat. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon.